pressure means something in terms of, of your joints knowing where they are in space. So Pacini corpuscles, they're in regions around your joint capsules. So they surround all of this. They're in your skin. Um, we'll talk about that, where they are in your skin and how that works in a minute. They're in your joint capsules, they're in ligaments, and they're in your tendons. And they're like little circles, they look like little discs. That's what these are called, um, concentric layers of capsules. They're little end organs that are like discs that just have like concentric little circles all through them. They're activated by the rapid joint angle changes and pressure. The changes in your joint angle and pressure. They submit, they'll transmit impulses for a very brief amount of time. So they'll send an impulse and then they just stop. And what they're telling you is how fast your joint is changing. And they tell this by the pressure that's going on. When you change your joint, you change the pressure distribution in your joints because different parts of your bones are, are touching. So when they receive that pressure, they send an impulse up to your brain and they say, this is how fast I am moving my joint versus this is how fast I am moving my joint. So when you look away and you're doing this, you know how fast this is moving and you know how, or how slow it's moving without needing to look at it. So if we thought about Ian Waterman in this case, he doesn't have this. He doesn't know how fast his joints are changing without looking at them. So they tell you how fast your joint is changing. Now, this is important in predicting where your body segment is going to end up. So when you're walking, right, you don't need to look at your feet, correct? Hopefully no, right? You don't need to look at your feet. So when you're walking, how do you know your foot's going to end up there? know, right? You know it's going to end up there. These guys help you predict. They tell your brain, based off of the velocity that you are moving this segment through space, this is where your foot's going to end up, so you know. So this is important in running and walking, so that when you're, no matter how fast or how slow you're walking, you know where your foot's going to end up, and if you need to change that, like let's say, all of a sudden there's a puddle of water and you want to go over it, you want to do this, you can do that. It will tell you, let's speed this up so that we can take this foot and put it over there. So they let you know where you are in space in terms of joint angle and how, you, how you're going based on the velocity that you are contracting, where this segment is going to end up in space. Um, they help you make adjustments for this prediction. So if you wanted to put your foot here, you needed to move at a certain velocity. They'll say, based on the velocity that you're moving now, you're not going to end up there. So we need to speed this up, or we need to slow this down. One thing you should notice about these, um, Pacinian corpuscles are good at detecting rapid changes. They don't tell you constant. They don't tell you a constant joint angle. They tell you rapid changes in joint angles versus what we're going to talk about in a minute. So these guys pick up changes in joint angle and pressure that are rapid, and they send very brief signals up to the brain so that you know how fast you're moving and where, and where you're going to end up. But they don't tell you constantly where your joint angle is. So that's what these guys do. These are very similar, the Ruffini Indies. They're very similar to Pacinian corpuscles in, in regards to they pick up changes in joint angles and they pick up changes in pressure. However, they send a continuous signal to the central nervous system where Pacinian corpuscles sent a brief signal. They're telling you constantly where your joints are, what angle are they. So when you're standing here, you can feel your joints, these are the guys that are telling you, this is the joint angle you are at. They don't tell you the velocity or how rapid these joint angles are changing, but they're sending a constant signal to the brain based off of what Rafini Innes is getting 
this, that is sending the signal, what your joint angle is. And then the Pacinian corpuscles tell you how fast that joint angle is changing. Do you see the difference there? In the picture, I thought you described the Pacinian ones as I know this this one looks different, but it, 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 they, in the book it draws it like this in your reading. This picture that I found, I like it just because I like this picture, but it doesn't, do, yeah. Okay. This is what they're supposed to look like. Okay. They look the same. They're concentric circles. In your book, it does talk about it. It will talk about it like this in, the, in your reading. But I, yeah, I don't know why this picture depicts it like this. Okay. It looks funny. Uh, what else do I want to say about this? Um, sense joint position, senses some changes in joint angle, the CNS knowing which receptor, uh, which receptors, oh I'm sorry, this got cut off, um, can you guys see that? The CNS knowing which receptors are stimulants, telling you what is your joint angle. So depending upon which one of these gets stimulated, is synonymous with a certain joint angle. So when these guys over here get stimulated, your brain knows, oh, that's 90 degrees. Or if these guys over here get stimulated, they'll know, oh, this is 5 degrees. Does that make sense? So depending on which ones get the stimulus or sending that information to the brain, that's synonymous with some joint angle. Um, any questions? Yeah, Jennifer. Now, we also have presenting corpuscles in the skin, not only in your joints and your tendons and ligaments, they're also going to be in your skin. The ones in your skin are not associated with joint angle changes, obviously. They're associated more with just pressure. So when you push down on something, it detects the pressure. Or if you were to walk on the soles of your feet and you feel pressure, these are the guys that are telling you changes in pressure. Like if you were to squat, there's an increase in pressure going into your like into the soles of your feet, they're telling you there's an increase of pressure going on. Um, the sneer, uh, these guys are touch, so you know you know somebody's touching you. You can feel it when somebody is touching you, or you are touching. You're gonna go through that, uh, or you are touching <laughs> something. It lets you know it's sensitive to touch. Uh, we have free nerve endings, pain, right? This is a nerve that's not associated with any receptor, so to speak. But when you, you know, prick yourself or something, pain, it tells you that really hurts, right? Um, these are all proprioceptors that help us know where we are in space. Um, they are sensitive to textures, like if something's smooth or something's rough or something's sharp. Um, it lets us feel shapes. We, were, we know if you closed your eyes and somebody said, okay, tell me what this is, you can feel the shape of something or how rough it is and try to figure out what it is. Um, and they also participate in reflexes, these guys. So uh, pain, like nerve endings, they also participate in reflexes as well. So, your head. All right, your head has receptors in them. You have these canals inside your ears. This is called your labyrinth system. <coughs> Cochlea is concerned with hearing. So we have like, this is the um, this is the inside of your ear. Right? This is like what the inside is going to look like. Inside your ear are these labyrinth like Canals. They're called semicircle canals. <coughs> and there's three of them. And they're located at perfect 90 degree angles. So they give you an XYZ coordinate system, basically. And in these canals is fluid. And as this fluid is shifting, you know, when you get nauseated, right? When you feel like you're spinning and you're not. The, the fluid that's in these canals are telling you that. So they're telling you what your head is doing in space. So if you tilt your head to the side, the fluid shifts to the side. That sends information up to the brain saying, your head just went to the side. 
right? So if your eyes are closed, you know it's doing that. So this, as the fluid is shifting in these canals that are in perfect right angles, they tell you information of how your head is moving through space without you needing to look at yourself. They also, when you spin something, 